Hi, my name is Paul Cresswell and welcome to Paul's Tackle Reviews. The purpose of this YouTube channel is to give you some real life reviews of tackle that's been out on the bank and used by an unbiased, unsponsored angler, which is me. As I always say with the videos, just because something works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for you, but I'll give you all the information to help you make your mind up. Today I'm looking at protecting your top kits and your rods by putting them in roofs when you're on the bank and when you're fishing. So top kits aren't cheap, 40 to 100 quid generally for those who you don't want them blowing around and getting damaged. Likewise with your rods you don't want them blowing and maybe your tip smashing and the inconvenience that that brings. I see plenty of people out there and they're just resting them on the floor. They're maybe putting them on the side tray and then they're in the undergrowth. And I just think there will be a time where they've damaged something and they think I need to look after them better. You don't want there's people walking, there's dogs, there's the undergrowth. You don't want to damage the tip and you don't want to get dirt in the end of your pole in your elastic. So. The best thing is to keep them off the ground and secure, but importantly, you need them to hand so you don't have to get up while you're fishing, but you need them out of the way and you need them so that if the wind's blowing, you, they're not going to blow off, they're going to be secure and it's one less thing to worry about. So I use a couple of products to help me out here and the first one is this from Matrix and it's got a seven tulips to hold your kits on there. They they turn but I've turned those into position and the distance between the leg the middle of the leg to the middle of the leg is around 59 centimeters. This has a 25 millimeter connector on that end and the same on the other end so you can't put it onto a 30 mil leg or a 36 mil leg without some kind of bracket or something in between i think this was just over 20 pounds when i got it and if you're putting your your top kit in you tend to put it in now there is a little bit of play backwards and forwards but not very much but it's secure it doesn't damage your kit going in and equally you can put your your rod butts in there and they're secure and while ever I've been using this and I've used it in some pretty windy conditions let's say we had in August this year we had quite a storm and I was fishing in a match and I had most of the wind on me and nothing moved during the time of the match. So it is a secure fixing. The other thing I then use is a Browning S-Line freestanding roost. And I'm going to show you how it's all fixed together and on my box. And I've got a video later that will take you around and how accessible it is. This is... Uh, from Browning it's got eight slots at the top and importantly you can see there it's got a kind of curve to it so if you think about which way the wind's blowing on any given day you can ensure that there's no chance of stuff blowing out of there. Now this weighs this isn't a heavy duty heavyweight piece of kit it weighs 1.4 kilos but like I say it's never moved in the time I've been using it and if you've got a couple of rods or top kits on they help secure it down if you use it in its standard formation with all four legs put down on the ground then this this bit here where the pole sits is 63 centimeters off the ground it does have extending legs again i'll put some photos here like i normally do so you can get them so that they are 97 centimeters off the ground now 
when you're setting up it doesn't really matter whether the the kits are pointing downwards or upwards onto this if you're using the chill loop because that secured it at that end so the height at the other end doesn't matter it's all about keeping it out of brambles keeping it out the the edge but i tend to try and put it level maybe with a slight upslope into that but it doesn't matter because your top kit isn't going to roll off the tulip and through that so you're not going to have a problem so how do i use these and that, like i said i've got the video but the key to making this work for me is this short leg that i've got so this is a really old piece of kit i found the end of my garage it's about 30 centimeters long um it, that diameter there is the old preston so that's 30 without an insert but obviously you can get any length that you want now all the manufacturers do it to fit all the legs so you can always find a comfy way of working so that there goes over my back leg on the box of my h30 and is secured and to be honest i leave it on during transit as well and then at the other end i cut off an old leg an old 25 millimeter piece of leg there that's in a green insert one of the old style lock that in secure and i then put the matrix onto that and you'll see on the video that i have it just behind the back leg there so it's away from the box so the landing net can come in here and not interfere with this and i secure that on on my back leg now what you could do is you could put a 25 mil leg in the other end to provide support i've never done that and i find that this is stable enough support enough you'll see when i take stuff off it does kind of bounce a little bit but i've ha had no problem and i don't see the need to carry an extra leg but you could do that if you really wanted stability and then about a meter or so further away i'll stand the freestanding roost up and put things on so you can see i can get seven top kits or i can put rods in there i've got eight slots on the browning and what i do find is that when i've got this in situ i can also put another rod but kind of there in the last slot so really i've got capacity for eight another little tip i'll give you is i tend to put the rod if i've just got one rod furthest away from me on the outside so that when i pick it up the reel handle doesn't catch other top kits and disturb them the other top uh, the other uh, tip to mention is when you put in the browning just be careful where the floats are on long top kits because what you don't want to do is catch them on there and bend them or break the tips so either make sure that the floats are securely that side or this side it'll depend how deep you're fishing and whether you've got short kits as well but just something to be aware of so unfortunately that is now discontinued by matrix um, but i'm sure there'll still be an odd shop here and there who's got them they have changed it now and i'll put a photo up of the new one with with the yellow tulips um, that does fit all leg sizes both ends and is adjustable so i'm assuming you could use it like i use it or you could put it on your back leg i think i would be worried about the landing net getting in the way and being on top of kits and maybe on top of your rod you could put it on a on a leg on your tray but i th i think by doing it that way you can have flexibility and there are occasions where i'm sat out on a platform and you can then put this on your back leg and you can almost have this kind of um 
going away from you like that and have your rods going towards the bank at the back so having it on a leg gives you some flexibility uh, Preston's have also done one of these with a center fixing you'll need to, you'll need to get a bracket but again all size brackets available and I'll put a photo of that one up there as well there's lots of freestanding roofs out there I do like this one with the the slight curves into there so that you can uh, the 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 top kits or whatever I've never had one blow out of there I always think about which way the wind's going to blow so it's blowing against that that's it for today I've taken you through the roofs um, I'm now going to put a list up uh, here of my most watched videos I've now got such a long list that I can't get them all on there but some of these have got 3,000 views and 2,000 views and really good feedback so all those videos are available on my YouTube site for you to watch uh, over the next couple of weeks I've got another couple planned and I'm tending to do one video a week at the minute and next week I'm going to look at my balanced pole tackle so I'm looking at my elastics my hooks and my line and how I balance them together I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to demonstrate it but I'm sure I'll come up with something so the hooks I use are Preston hooks the elastic is the new Duraslip and most of the line I use is Matrix line. I do have some Drennan as well. I'll take you through that. And then the week after I'm going to look at uh, Cadence CS10 reels. I've got them in both the 3000 and the 4000 size. I've had these a really long time. So I'll take you through all of their features and how they work and how good I believe that they've been for me. If you want to give me a thumbs up that's great it helps spur me on a little bit or if you want to put a comment or indeed a question below that's great. Obviously if you subscribe then you'll get automatically notified of the upcoming videos. That's it for today thanks very much for watching Tight Lines.